part of what's been fun about collaborating on The Mandalorian with Lucasfilm and Disney is that we have been able to see through a few technical innovations and a few firsts that I think are going to have a lot of impact on the way uh, television and movies are made moving forward. In partnership with ILM and Epic, we have put together a system whereby which we can have game engine, real-time render, and video wall technology coming together to create a backdrop for the big, beautiful world of Star Wars. The volume is 21 feet tall. It's 75 feet in diameter, run by seven machines, pumping the visuals onto the screen that's, that's been created in pre-production and can be on the screen within 24 hours of, of being finaled. It's incredibly impressive when you first walk out there because it completely surrounds your peripheral vision. And you really quickly forget that you're indoors and you're not out on some planet surface. It feels like a real three-dimensional environment surrounding you because it is a three-dimensional environment. You can allow your key creatives to all make decisions together so that the shots are captured entirely in camera, which allows for a better performance. And what was so exciting about this is by bringing those people together, things started to click and we started to realize, well, let's not just do green screen and interactive light. If we're gonna design the whole set and game engine ahead of time, maybe we could have some in-camera effects. If you look at visual effects, heavy films, you've got a, a film set and then it's gonna to go to post and it's gonna get the world put in. Here we're considering all of that at the same time and how do we create a background and foreground that live together on the volume harmoniously. When we started to play with the idea of using Unreal Engine for virtual production, that's one of the things that uh, Richard and John started to embrace is that you've got this very dynamic world where you can have randomization of things and find the happy accident that gives you the perfect shot. Being able to see the actors point at things and see what they're looking at was pretty transformative. It gave everybody context with the added benefit that if you want to move a mountain from there to there, you can do it instantly. You could switch between the Iceland location to the desert location, all within the same day of shooting. The ability to shoot a 10-hour dawn is extraordinary. To shoot any sequence where you say, oh, this world's not quite right, let's just move it a little bit. An extraordinary number of benefits and advantages for shooting in that environment. It's mind-blowing what that tool is. Shots of character in a vehicle traveling through a complex environment. It's always very difficult to do believably on stage. LED screens are a wonderful solution to that problem because what you're doing is you're taking this technique of image-based lighting that we've been using in computer graphics for years and use it to light a subject. And then we would do shoots where we would texture map real lit surfaces onto our game engine geo and so the camera could move anywhere. We would do interiors, like Werner Herzog's office. And then you started doing things like building sets into it, having half a spaceship with reflective surfaces. And so it became exciting because by the end of the season, it was like, let's start designing sets around what this could do well. Just like the good old days. It's really a game changer for filmmaking. Yo, what's up guys, it's your boy John Jedi here, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about The Mandalorian Season 2. I have yet to actually watch Season 1 and I know what you're all thinking, my channel name is John the Jedi and I still haven't watched it, but the Disney Plus streaming service is yet to come out in my country and I don't want to get done for streaming things. So yeah, I've just been waiting patiently, but it is coming out I believe in about 8 days on the 25th of March. So it's going to give me a reason to binge watch a lot of the things since the COVID-19 virus is somewhat taken over the world and we've all been uh, pretty much forced to stay inside. So it's given me a reason to, to watch a lot of things. So basically they were talking about in that video that you just saw that uh, season two is going to be very different to season one. I know that a tiny bit about what's going on. Obviously it's about the bounty hunters and uh, him protecting baby Yoda and 
stuff like that but i haven't really looked into much detail of the story of season one because i didn't want to spoil it too much for myself but i will be doing breakdown videos and stuff for the easter eggs of season two when it comes out and i am very excited to be doing that let's talk a little bit more about how they're going to be changing season two compared to season one so they are going to be trying to build the environment more with uh like different engines and try and make it more realistic compared to the films and the tv shows uh like the cartoon tv shows that everybody knows and loves uh but they are trying to do it a little bit differently with the characters this time because quite a lot of the people that were in season one were um and they were CGI compared to what they're doing now, which is going to be more practical. But luckily, this season's finale, this season two, sorry, the season two finale was filmed before uh, the lockdown of the entire world started. So thankfully, they can just edit that all together and it will get released later this year in around October time. But uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier are still trying to fix a couple things, so it is going to be a bit harder for them. Uh, Vision and one, well, Wonder Vision, that's still doing the same thing, and so is Loki. Actually, I'm pretty sure Loki hasn't started filming yet, so that's going to be a little fine. But uh, we're going to have to wait a little longer for that to come out due to the virus. But I'm sure we can all wait with all the footage that we are going to be getting from Loki and all the hints towards it in the Wonder Vision and Falcon and the Winter Soldier series. Is. Obviously, that Black Widow film's coming out later this year in May as well, so that's coming out very soon. If you guys do want to enter the giveaway for a ticket to that film, just hit that subscribe button, comment down below, and I will pick a winner uh, closer to the time of the film coming out. Screw it. So yeah, that I, I don't really have that much information for you guys today because obviously I don't know a lot about the show. I, all I know is uh, from the video just... Uh, what you just saw but other than that i i know nothing but i will do some more videos on the show when it does come out in season two and once i've watched season one i will be able to speak a little bit more because i'll know more information about the series but i hope you guys did enjoy regardless if you did make sure to smack that like button it'd be much appreciated if you didn't hit that dislike and let me know down in the comment section below why you didn't like it and i'll try to uh, do something a little differently uh, in, in a different video but subscribe if you haven't subscribed already hit that notification bell to get notified when i upload all of my videos thank you guys for watching and i'll see you tomorrow